Hey guys, Adam here with AmericanMuscle.com and today we're taking a closer look at and installing the Oracle Chrome OE style headlights with the Color Shift LED halos available for the 2008 to 2014 Challengers without HIDs. Now, if you do have HIDs, this exact same kit's available right in the category for you, but this one is not gonna fit your vehicle, so just keep that in mind. Jumping right into it here, guys, this is a great option for anyone looking for an OE style headlight, but with a really versatile LED color shift halo. As you can see, we've got the halos in action right now in a full color smooth mode, which means it's changing through all of the main colors in a smooth, gradual way. Now that is all custom. What you can do is go right onto the app because this kit includes a module that emits its own Wi-Fi to connect right to your smartphone so you can control it on an app. You can change to any color on a color wheel, making it so easy to use. This is a great option for guys not looking to cut open their factory headlights to glue in LED halos to make this work. This is a full kit right out of the box with a full headlight replacement already put together. Now, if you take out your phone, you have access to this color wheel here. Now, as you can see, we've got that color changing, but if I wanna take control and change it to any color, we can go green, blue, maybe split the difference, red, it's so versatile and so responsive. We can even go into a custom setting to make it do whatever we want. I've created a scene to go right into AM colors. We got some blue and orange happening here to give some AM colors. You can fully customize it and do really whatever you want. There's also a strobe light mode and a bunch of other modes to flip through colors in a bunch of different ways. This also has full brightness control, full speed control, so really, whatever you wanna do, you can do. Now this kit does require a little bit of splicing because it does have that module included in the kit, but it's one of the more premium options out there and it's actually not that hard. It's as simple as it possibly could be with all the wiring involved. Now this does have that OE styling. So if you wanted to turn those LED halos off, you can do it right on your phone, right on that app, or just disconnect that module from under the hood and it goes right back to looking like a completely bone stock vehicle. The headlight housing themselves has that chrome high reflectivity, so the halos do look like they're reflecting into that chrome, but when you turn it off, it does look like a factory challenger, which I really like. You get so much versatility that it can go to both sides of the spectrum, bone stock or completely custom. So if you're looking to show up at car shows and you wanna throw these lights on, you have them there, but if you wanna roll in the streets and be street legal, you have that option as well. We'll take a really closer look at the details of those LEDs and comparing it to stock in just a little bit, but know this kit comes in right around the $700 mark. Again, it's a pre-made kit right out of the box, so you're not doing any cutting or anything like that that you'd have to do with bare LEDs by themselves, so it does put a higher price tag on the kit, but in my opinion, if you're looking for color-changing halos, this is the absolute way to go. Now, the install for that is gonna get the full three out of three wrenches on our difficulty meter. The front bumper does have to come off for any headlight job, which of course takes a little bit more mechanical experience, but you can still get it done in the driveway at home. The module included in the kit does splice the wires in, but it couldn't be simpler, and I'll walk you through that in a minute. It took me about three hours from start to finish. I'd imagine it'd take you about the same with some experience and the right tools. Simple hand tools are required, so we're gonna walk through the tools. So what do you say we get started? Now the tools needed for this install include an impact gun, a couple of extensions, a ratchet, T27 Torx bit, seven millimeter deep socket, short 10 millimeter socket, and a deep 10 millimeter socket, 13 millimeter deep socket, and a universal swivel socket is recommended. Panel removal tool, some wire strippers, wire cutters, a very small flathead screwdriver, and the recommended tools needed for the install would be 3M tape, additional wiring, quick splice ring terminals, and a couple of zip ties. Guys, first step here, we're gonna pop our hood and remove that factory shroud from the top of our rad. Now it's in two pieces. What you're gonna do is go to this open hole on the side, pull out, and just remove it from underneath your hood latch. Do the same thing on the other side. Now these two plastic panels here are attached to your front bumper, holding it to your frame. Now what you wanna do is grab a panel removal tool, flathead screwdriver works as well, I just find this to be a little easier, and we're gonna remove these plastic rivets or the plastic pushpin clips. Pull the top portion out, followed by the bottom. Do that for all six.
All right, now that we have under the hood taken care of, this is detached. We gotta do the sides in the wheel well and remove it from underneath as well. So what we're gonna do is put the vehicle up in the air. If you guys don't have access to a lift, make sure you're using a jack and jack stance. So you wanna get the vehicle up in the air enough to access the bottom of your chin splitter. Now the chin splitter is attached to the bumper, so we need to detach it from the belly pan. Now we don't have to fully remove the entire belly pan because it's really just the bumper we're worried about. So if we get our seven millimeter socket, we have a couple of bolts along the edges here. We are missing a couple guys. So if you have these holes filled, make sure you're removing those as well. We're gonna tackle the ones we have here. So grab a seven socket and remove these bolts. All right, so now we want access to our wheel well. Now, if you need to, you can turn your wheel both sides just to gain a little bit better access to it. Grab a panel removal tool or that flathead screwdriver, and we're gonna remove those same pushpin clips we had earlier, but the ones in this wheel well. Now, there's one at the bottom here, then it goes one, two, three. You don't have to keep going all the way around. Just make your way up to where your bumper meets your fender. This is what we need to detach. So grab that panel tool, and we're gonna start working these off. This one here is a little bit disconnected, but just to show you guys how that works, pull out the top and pull out the bottom. I'm going to repeat that for all of these. Now, as you can see, we've got a bolt that's a little awkward to get to. I'm going to use two extensions a swivel joint and a deep 10 millimeter socket to remove the nut on a stud that's right about here. You wanna go straight back in the wheel well to the stud pointing straight back to the rear. Now the stud is right about here facing that way with a 10 millimeter nut on it. So what I'm gonna do is put this straight back, loosen it up and then put my hand in there to get the nut so it doesn't fall. So here's what we're gonna do, peel that back. You're just gonna peek your head in there. It's not too deep. So once you hang this on, get it to connect, and we'll remove it. Perfect. Now it's just loose enough that I can get in there and grab it. If it does fall, there is that belly shield there to help grab it. It's a tricky little guy, but with the right a couple of extensions and a swivel socket, that'll definitely be easier to grab. Now, just because it's the last thing holding on this slightly smaller splash shield, we're gonna grab this 10 millimeter bolt right here. It's really easily accessible, not like that last one. Perfect, you can set that aside and repeat for the other side. Now, at this point, you wanna disconnect the bulb for this little quarter marker light. Now what you're gonna do is just stick your hand in here, twist, and just pull the bulb out of the socket. I know it's tough to see here, but once you twist it, it should pop right out. All you're gonna wanna do is just twist and pull right back out. And for then, and then you can just leave that right in there. All right, so now we got the Challenger lowered down again, so we're under the hood. We have two more bolts, two more nuts rather one on each side by the headlight. So right here in this corner where the bumper meets the fender, there's just one little 10 millimeter nut. I'm gonna use an extension, that swivel socket again, and a 10 millimeter deep socket. And we're gonna remove that from both sides, starting on our passenger. Now it is a very short stud, and ours just fell down there onto the belly pan again, so that's great. But once you get that off, just repeat for the other side. Now all of our bolts are removed for the bumper removal. All we have to do now is just disconnect that panel from the side where our wheel well is on both sides, and then we should be able to just pull this whole thing off in one piece. So all you really wanna do is just reach down. You're just gonna pop and disconnect. Just be real gentle, you don't wanna scratch any paint. So with that, do the same thing on the other side. Disconnect on the driver's side as well. Now we can lift up from the top and pull off.
I'm gonna put it gently on the ground here. We just wanna disconnect our fog lights and then we can set it aside. Now for the fog lights again, pinch, pull straight back. As you can see, this harness does connect with a couple of Christmas tree clips. You can just pull them off as well. Now guys, we did all that work. Now we can finally get to the headlight removal. You wanna grab a T27 Torx bit. There's two screws right on the bottom, one here on the top, and then we can pull that housing out. So I'm gonna use an extension to make life a little easier. We're gonna go straight through and remove this top one first. Make sure you're holding on to them for later. All right, now we have two down here on the bottom. Once you get this last one out, headlight's gonna start falling, so make sure you can grab it. Just set it down. Now these two bulbs here have a red locking tab, so right on the back here, you're just gonna lift up on the locking tab. You're gonna pinch and disconnect those harnesses. Now we can set our factory headlight aside. All right, now you can repeat for the other side. Well guys, we got our factory headlights finally off of our 2013 RT behind me. Now I have one factory and one of our oracles on the table here to give you a side-by-side -side comparison. And for the most part, visually, there's not a whole lot different until the lights are turned on. The only exception being that LED ring. So before I jump into that, know that this is a factory housing, factory styling with the exception of the LEDs, all made using OEM quality CAD data from Dodge to make sure it's a perfect fit. The lenses are a high quality polycarbonate lens, just like your factory ones. They are a chrome housing as well with a high reflectivity, which means that all of the new custom lights will definitely look a lot brighter and they'll look like they're a lot more involved in the housing than they are because of the reflectivity. Now those LED rings that you're seeing are right around the halos there. And those are the RGB LEDs. They're really bright, really responsive. They're very attractive and they're gonna be a lot brighter than a factory bulb. They're gonna be a lot brighter than some of the other options out there. Now, Oracle does sell a lot of different versions. They have the CCFLs, the SMD LEDs, and the plasmas. This is the SMD. Now, it might not be as bright as some of the more top tier kind of quality LEDs, but for what you're getting here, it's a lot brighter than factory and a lot brighter than most of the other options in the category. This emits its own Wi-Fi signal. So you can connect to this on your phone to connect this using Oracle's smartphone app. Now, the smartphone app allows you to change the color to literally whatever color you want. They have the little dial wheel that you can scroll through yourself, but they also allow you to do a do-it-yourself custom program, which means you can change the RGB as you want to really create your own color. Now that's really useful because a lot of the other ones just have preset configurations, which this does have, but it allows you to take that a little bit further, and that's what you're getting for this a little bit higher of a price tag for this kit. Now all of that's taken care of using that smartphone app and the Wi-Fi emitted from this module here. Now, one of the other things I really wanna point out between this, comparing it to some of the other ones on the market, this does not need to be in sight of a controller. What that basically means is some of the other modules and some of the alternative kits use an IR signal. And if you know anything about the, I, the IR or infrared signal, you need to be within arm's reach, you need to be within sight line of that. That's not the case here. You have a 100 foot radius from this box that it'll allow you to work with that Wi-Fi, which is great. You don't need to mount it somewhere that you can see it. it. Doesn't have to be on the dashboard or the windshield or anything on the front grill. You guys can hide this away. As long as you're within 100 feet, it works. So I really like that. Now, one of the other things that you wanna keep in mind is because it's already built in, you don't have to take apart your factory housing. Now, a lot of alternatives also make you cut open your housing to install these rings, but with that Oracle preset, it's not gonna be your case here. Turning that around does get a little bit complicated at the back end, but nothing we can't tackle. There's a bunch of wires we gotta tackle for splicing. Now, there's about four of them. There's, of course, two grounds for both of the sides of the LEDs, and the other ones are colored to let you know that they're the positive cables. Now, I'm gonna show you guys every step of that. I just wanted to show you the back here. So, it looks like a bit of a rat's nest right out of the box, but we'll take care of that, get it nice and neat, and splice them together. So, first, what we're gonna do is install them, then we'll take care of the splicing. All right, so now we're gonna take our passenger side Oracle headlight. We're gonna set it into place here. Start unraveling some of this wiring. What we're gonna do is tuck it inside here. You don't wanna trap it outside of this frame here. So what you wanna do is tuck it in right near your washer fluid reservoir on your passenger side, just so it doesn't get caught up anywhere. Bring that all the way through. 
grab your factory harness, and you're gonna plug them into the same position they were in on your stock headlights. So it's gonna go here, click that down, drop the red locking tab. Do the same thing for the black harness. Perfect. Now we can set this back into the factory position. All right, grab your stock hardware and we're gonna put it back through. Grab your Torx bit. I'm just gonna use the extension to get it in there, just a couple of threads to hold it in place. All right, now you can grab your impact gun or your ratchet and tighten these down. Now you can repeat for the other side. All right, so now we can put our bumper right back in the front of our vehicle. What we're gonna do is plug in our fog light and our quarter light on the side. Grab that brown harness. You're gonna snap that back in to the fog light. All right, perfect. And since we have easy access to it, we might as well grab our bulb that we disconnected earlier in the wheel well. We have a bit easier time now, so we're just gonna twist that back into the housing. Perfect, repeat for the other side. Now what I'm gonna do is take those Christmas tree clips and we're gonna put those back into those retaining holes. There is three of them here, so just reconnect them if they're still intact. Now there are additional ones here if you wanna come all the way to the middle. You can reconnect that. It's a little bit tighter. This one here is actually closed up, so we're gonna skip that one. What we're gonna do is re reposition our bumper. You want to make sure these headlight studs are going back into the holes. Perfect. Now you can reconnect your wheel wells. Perfect. Same thing on the other side. Now we can start bolting that bumper back up. We're going to take our 10 millimeter nut and do the corner headlight pieces first. Make sure your studs through that little hole there. You can feed this on. I know it's a real tight squeeze, but if you can get this on, just a couple of threads, or even just start it up, grab your socket and your swivel, tighten it down. Perfect, now repeat for the other side. Now while we're under the hood, we're gonna grab our plastic rivets and replace them on the black panel here holding on the front of the bumper. Just push them down, push down the plug. Super simple. Perfect. All right, so now that we have the car back up in the air, grab your 10 millimeter nut that holds onto the stud that's right about here facing the rear of the vehicle that we removed earlier. Now again, I know it was really tough to see earlier. You couldn't really show it on camera. So I'm gonna put my hand in there just kind of thread it in as much as I can by my fingers, and then we'll grab my contraption with the two extensions, the swivel and the 10. So let's get in there. Now you're gonna grab that little flap and then reinstall that onto the side here. They are marked LH and RH for left hand and right hand side, so make sure you got the right one. Fits like a glove and just thread that 10 millimeter bolt back in there. Grab a 10 socket and tighten that down. All right, now you can take those plastic rivets and line up that wheel well liner. 
tighten them down. All right, so now we got the car a little bit higher in the air. We're gonna reconnect our splitter to the splash shield, the belly pan, grab those seven millimeter bolts, tighten them down. All right, now we can get started on some of the wiring. What we want to do is get our driver side wiring you see here routed to the passenger side in order to hook up to that router module for the Wi-Fi connection. The only thing prohibiting us from getting to that side is the bolt here holding on your factory airbox to the rad support. Now what you can do to get around that is I have this and I'm going to wire it straight through here with our ABS line. What we want to do is disconnect this little clip here and this little clip and what we're going to do is take that and run it under this bolt to the other side. That way, whenever you need to take your air box off, you don't have to worry about unclipping your wiring. So just feed that over and reconnect that harness clip. If you don't do this and you just run it above that bolt, anytime you wanna take this off, your, your wiring's in the way you can. So this is definitely gonna make life a little easier for you. Now with that wiring fed under that bolt, we can start running this to the other side. And by doing that, you just wanna unravel the harnesses. That gives you a ton of extra wire. Now securing these back, of course, is, you know, it's all personal preference how you wanna do it. There are ABS lines right here, like I said. You can zip tie those easily to the ABS lines and that would just secure this under here, out of the way, you wouldn't even see them. They'd be tucked under this rad support right here. Um, so that's probably what we're gonna do. We're gonna grab some zip ties and just secure those back now. But you wanna make sure you have enough wiring going all the way over to this side. All right, so first you wanna grab your zip tie and we're just gonna start securing these back. Slide those under your ABS lines. All right, once you get it to come all the way back through, just clip those zip ties back. We'll cut the excess when we're done. Now next, you see there's two resistors here. The resistors are gonna be somewhere along this backside, so you might wanna, you can either stack them and zip tie them back that way, you can put them one after the next. Again, personal preference. All right, now you can take wire cutters and just snip the excess on the zip ties to make it a little cleaner. Now, of course, our battery's in the trunk, so what we're gonna do before we start playing with live wires is to grab a 10 millimeter socket, and we're just gonna disconnect the negative terminal on our battery and just set it aside so it doesn't contact that terminal. Once you have that disconnected, just pull it out of the way so it doesn't contact that terminal again. What we're gonna do for our wiring is start with our passenger side headlight and untangle all the wires. You wanna untie them, get them nice and loose. And what we're gonna do is twist together, splice together the colors for our passenger side. So we're gonna put the green to the green, the black to the black, the blue to the blue, and the red to the red. And then we're gonna do the same thing to our driver's side. And then each one is gonna to come together for a passenger and driver, and then they'll go into the module. So it is pretty simple. It's gonna be a little time consuming, but it's pretty simple. So we'll start with our red. So just peel that red off just to get a little bit more freedom. 
and the red from the other wire coming off that same headlight. And these two reds are gonna get twisted together. Just like that. So now the reds are connected. Do the same thing with the blue, and then the green, and then the black. Alright, so now you have both sets of wiring from the passenger side spliced together by color. Do the same thing for the driver's side. Now that we have the two from the driver's side and two from the passenger side together, we got to put the driver and passenger side together into one. So what we're going to do is take the black ground from the passenger side to the black ground from the driver's side, and these guys are going to go together. So you're really, you're taking two wires on each side and splicing them into four. So when you're twisting them together, you should twist them so that both sides come together just like this. They'll be twisted together into one wire. All right, so that's the green. Same thing for the red and blue. Now that we have our wires twisted together by color, we have reds, blue, green, and black, we're gonna start splicing them into our module here. Now on the top, you'll notice the output box is labeled R, G, B, red, green, blue. That's exactly where you're gonna put them. The reds are gonna go right in this red slot, and you're gonna tighten it down using a very small flathead screwdriver for the screw up top. So you don't actually really need to splice. Everything is built right into this easy to use module. What we're going to do first is grab the red wires and you're going to line it up to the red slot right in here. Grab your flathead and just tighten down the screw. Once you have that tight, just give it a quick tug. If it's secure in there and not falling out, you're good to move on. Next, we're going to grab our green, do the same thing right next to it in the G slot. All right, give it a tug, move on to the blue. Now for your black wires, those are going to skip NC and go to V+. Plus. So your ground wires here, your black wires, will go right to V+. Plus. Perfect. Now on the left, you see input. Input has a plus sign on the left and a minus on the right. Plus is your positive, minus is your negative. Now you are gonna have to pick up and use separate wiring not included in the kit. We've got two red wires here. The longer portion we're gonna use for our positive, the shorter one here we're gonna use for our negative. Now what we're gonna have to do is splice on these small ring terminals. I'm gonna use this ring terminal connected to that red wiring to go to our fuse box positive right here. So we're gonna pull this 13 millimeter nut off and bolt this down there. That's gonna give us a good positive connection. Underneath the fuse box, there is a ground strap going to the frame here, the body. I'm gonna remove that 10 millimeter and do the same thing for our negative. So first things first, we gotta splice these on. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use my clamp to hold on to our ring terminal. I'm gonna take our wiring with the exposed wire after you strip it, slide that in here. Clamp her down. Perfect. Give it a tug, make sure it's secure. This end's gonna go to that positive on the fuse box. So what you're gonna do is grab a 13 millimeter socket and remove that. Pretty simple. Once you get that off, grab that ring terminal, slide it over that stud, put this back in place. Now the other end of that wire, we're gonna put into the plus sign on the input. So that's gonna be our first slot. Slide that in there and tighten down the screw. Give it a tug, perfect. 
Do the exact same thing for the other wire, only it's gonna go down to that ground strap underneath. Clamp that down, perfect. Now for this, you're gonna need a 10 millimeter socket. We're gonna go straight down here to our ground. Once you get that nut off, put the ring terminal over the stud and replace the nut. Tighten her down. All right, now the other end can go into the minus or the second slot on your module, and that's going to be your ground. Grab your screwdriver, tighten it down. Perfect. All right, next up we're gonna mount our unit. Now what we're gonna use is 3M tape. Now you wanna pick up 3M tape separately, it's not included in the kit. We've got two strips here on the back of our module. And what we're gonna do is apply it right here to the inside of our wheel well. Where you mount it is completely up to you. You wanna mount it somewhere that is gonna be clean looking, somewhere that's going to be in arm's reach. And this is a pretty good spot. So we got 3M down there. We're just gonna put pressure to make sure it's getting a good bond. Guys, once your module's mounted and you're ready to turn them on, hit match on the back of the module, go to your Wi-Fi, connect to the Wi-Fi that the module's emitting, download the app, and you're good to go. Now if we take a closer look at this app once our lighting is installed and we're connected, you have the option to use this color wheel. Now as you can see we have white LED halos on right now so it can look pretty stock and we can even adjust the brightness of those LEDs with this simple bar. Bring that all the way down and it dims those lights but still has them on real subtle. It's a good way to drive on the street if you're looking to keep it street legal and just have a little bit of an accent. Now if you wanted to bring that brightness back up, you do so really quickly and change the color. Bring it back down for a deep blue and you can really go all the way around this color wheel and it reacts in real time, which is really cool. You then have the option to go to a scene. We have AM color, so I can select that. That's a preset custom scene, and that'll change between blue and orange. It looks like AM colors. Go to mode, and these are preset modes. You can scroll through this wheel for dozens of modes. So if you wanna do static green, you can have that as a preset color. You can do an RGB skip, so it does the red, green, blue, skipping back and forth. But let's change that speed down to speed three. That means it's gonna hold each color at a speed of three. So a couple of seconds go by and it changes, but we can even bring the brightness down. So there's such good versatility here. We can do a white strobe, which is a bit much, but if you like that sort of thing, it's something to use. You can even bring the speed down so it doesn't strobe as quickly. Adjust that brightness. And then finally, you can go over to DIY. And now, as I said, we created the scene of the AM colors, but you can make it do whatever you want. Say we want to do the AM colors in blue and orange, but change it to strobe, gradual, or jump, so it flickers back and forth. You can change the brightness for your scene, and you can change the speed. And then finally, you can hit save and change it and set it as a preset in one of your scenes. So you can hit scene three, change that, and you can name it. Let's name it AM. Hit OK. And now it's saved in your scenes. Hit play, and you can switch between them. Something to take a look at. There's a lot of different ways to use this. You can connect more than one device. If you wanted to add a light bar with the same color changing lights from Oracle, you can connect that and have them both right here on the app. Well guys, that's gonna wrap up my review and install for the Oracle Chrome OE style headlights with the color shift LED halos for the 08 to 14 non-HID challengers. If you want to pick this one up for your own challenger, you can do so right here at AmericanMuscle.com.